As the founder of leasinguniversity.com, the number one sales training platform for leasing consultants in the world, I know there are many things that you can say and many things that you can do to put yourself in the best possible position to get the lease. But on this video, I want to give you 19 phrases that I want you to be conscious of. 19 phrases that are hurting you. 19 things that a lot of us in property management are saying on a very regular basis that's not putting us in the best possible position with that prospect, with that renter, and is not helping improve our chances of getting that lease. Hey everybody, I'm Matt Easton, the founder of Leasing University. Let's jump into 19 things that you should avoid saying as a leasing consultant. And if I miss anything on this list, please comment below. What are some of the pitfalls that maybe I've missed? All right, the first thing, to be honest with you. Oh, a lot of us, we don't even realize that we're saying this. Hey, you know what, Tim, to be honest with you, this property is great. Or to be honest with you, you really don't need a dog park. Or to be honest with you, the parking situation is fabulous. When you say to be honest with you, you're actually, what you're basically saying to your prospect is, hey, Tim, everything that I've said up until this point was a lie. And even if Tim doesn't realize that subconsciously, when he hears to be honest with you, it's causing his subconscious mind to go, ooh, should I really be trusting this person? The second thing that you should avoid saying, how can I help you? What? That's how I answer the phone. Hey, thanks for calling Oak Brook Towers. How can I help you? Never, never, never say, how can I help you? There's nothing wrong with the words, how can I help you? The problem is, where have you heard that before? That's right. Every time you go retail shopping, every time you walk into a store, in most retail scenarios, the person at the front is always going to say, welcome. Hey, thanks for coming in. How can I help you? And you are classically conditioned to go, I'm just looking. I don't need any help. When you say, how can I help you? to your prospects, or how can I help you to your residents? Two things happen. One, subconsciously, they're having that defensive kind of Heisman Trophy thing going on where they're, hey, get away, salesperson. Number two, they're also gonna be less likely to be open and honest with you because think about the words that you're saying. How can I help you? If you are offering to help me, subconsciously my mind is going to be saying, okay, well, what do I owe you in return? That's why we always say, I'm just looking. I'm just going to let you know right now, you might not even know why you're saying it. The reason why when you walk into a retail store and somebody says, how can I help you? And you say, I'm just looking. It's because the choice of their words. If you help me, well, then I'm going to feel obligated to buy something from the store. And I don't want to feel obligated. Therefore, I'm going to reject your request for help. It's much better to say, what can I get you information on? Much, much better choice of words. All right. The third thing, and this goes along with, to be honest with you, trust me, trust me, you're going to love it. Trust me. As soon as you use the words, trust me, that person's not going to trust you. If you want to sound like a used car salesman or one of those ambulance chasing attorneys, just go ahead and use the word trust me a lot. If you're a professional, if you've been trained on the leasing university system, you know how to treat your prospects with respect. You know how to determine their wants and needs. You're a professional. They're naturally going to trust you. You don't have to say trust me. It's counterproductive. It's actually going to make them trust you less. Number four, hope. Oh, I, I really hope you're going to like this apartment. Oh, I, I can't wait to show you the pool. I, I really hope you like it. Eliminate the word hope from your vocabulary. You are a leasing professional. You are one hundred percent sold on your community. It is the absolute right community for that prospect. Hope should not even enter into the equation. Only an unsure, unconfident person is going to use the word hope. And let me give you an example. You're going to get on an airplane tomorrow morning and the pilot looks over and says, boy, I, I, I hope this is going to be a great flight. You know? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and unbuckle and get off the plane. Don't use 
hope. It's going to freak you out if your pilot uses it, and it's going to freak your prospects out if you, as their leasing consultant, use the word hope. All right. Next thing, I hate this one when I teach follow-up, when I teach uh, phone training, sorry to bother you. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you. Don't say that. You're a professional. You're not sorry to bother them. Immediately, if they hear the word sorry to bother you, guess what the expectation is? You're a pest. You're a salesperson. You're going to bother them. You need to be adding value when you call somebody. You need to project confidence. Your time is just as valuable as their time. You are helping them work through one of the biggest life events that they could have moving. All right. It's terrifying for them. You're not bothering anybody by following up. So stop, stop apologizing for it. Number six, just following up. Oh, I'm just following up with you. Uh, hey, you, you, you know, you toured uh, unit 904 uh, earlier this morning or you came in last week. I'm just following up with you. Who says that? Salespeople, unconfident people, people that are not professional. Eliminate that when you call somebody, I'm just following up with you. Again, you need to be professional. You need to add value. If you're having trouble, Figuring out what to say on your follow-up calls, check out the training at leasinguniversity.com. We have a tremendous course on follow-up. The entire program is going to help you be more comfortable and more confident so that you can get more leases. All right, here's another one. Obviously. Well, obviously, uh, you know, it's this or obviously that or, you know, well, obviously um, that's not the master bedroom. Don't use the word obviously. You sound condescending. You sound arrogant. You sound like you are trying to let them know how much smarter than, than, than them you are. Eliminate the word obviously. If your prospect wants you to answer the same question 17 times in a row, realize this. Chances are it's because they're nervous. It's because they're stressed. And most importantly, it's because they're about to make a decision with you. Eliminate words with uh, like obviously that are going to seem condescending. You want to be relaxed, cool, and comfortable, and you want them to feel the same way. Don't use words like obviously. All right. Number eight, going back to follow up. Hey, you got a minute? Has anybody in the history of multifamily ever leased an apartment in a minute? No. Stop sounding like a used car. Hey, hey, do you got a minute? I just wanted to, I just wanted to uh, follow up with you. You sound terrible. You need to start the call, providing value to them and making the best use of their time. Don't ask them if you have a minute. Okay. First of all, the call is going to be longer than a minute. So you're already lying to them. Hey, trust me, you got a minute. Obviously throw all those in one call. You're for sure not going to get the lease, but stop asking people, Hey, do you got a minute? All right, number nine, maybe. Um, well, maybe maybe we can get you in next month, or uh, maybe maybe I've got some specials uh, that could help you with that. Again, it's just like hope. You're not confident. You're not sure of yourself. If you don't know what the specials are, or you don't know when it's going to be available, great question. Let me find out the answer to that. Great question. Let's go research it together. Don't use maybe. It just makes you look unconfident and unprofessional. Would you want your airline pilot using the word maybe? Uh, you know what? Uh, maybe we're going to be landing in about an hour if we're lucky. Uh, don't use the word maybe. All right. Number 10, same, same lines. Perhaps, um, per perhaps you could, uh, um, have your, have your husband come back in and, and look, per per perhaps they could come back in and look at the apartment. When can you bring your husband in? I really want your husband to see this. When can you bring your husband in? You're not using words like perhaps. Again, not confident, right? Uh, perhaps the plane's going to land in an hour. Yeah. If a pilot shouldn't say it, you shouldn't say it either. All right. Number 11, rent. Do, do you want to rent this apartment? Do you want, what does that convey to them? That conveys spending money, large amounts of money. Do you want to rent the apartment? Instead, use words like, do you want to live here? Do you want to move in? Do you want to move forward? I love that. Hey, does it make sense to move forward? Do you want to move forward? Not do you want to rent the apartment? Nobody wants to rent 
the apartment. They want to move into the apartment. They want to live in the apartment. They want to move forward. Who doesn't want to move forward with their life? They want to get things done. Hey, does it make sense to move forward? Don't use the term rent. Number 12, contract. Oh, we got to look over the contract. Now, a lot of you in property management are great at this, but there's still a few of you out there that are using the words contract. Contract is scary. It is freaky. It is stressful. You are signing your life away. Instead, use the word agreement. Hey, does it make sense to go fill out the agreement? Does it make sense to get the paperwork out of the way? Who doesn't want to get paperwork out? Let's just get the paperwork out of the way. Let's come down to the leasing office, get the paperwork out of the way. Sounds a lot better than, hey, let's go through the, uh, the contracts and everything, get that all secured. Got it? Great. Number 13. I haven't heard back from you. Uh, hey, Tina, this is uh, Matt Easton over here at uh, Oak Brook Towers. I, 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 I haven't heard back from you. You're weak, you're unprofessional, and you're making them feel guilty. That is the absolute worst thing that you can do with a prospect is now you're putting it on, well, I've been sitting around waiting for you and I haven't heard back from you. You sound like my mom when I was late as a teenager coming home. Where were you? You could have been in a ditch. The last thing you want is to make your prospect feel guilty. All that's going to do is make them not want to do business with you. All that's going to do is make them not want to return your phone call and make them not want to revisit that community. Don't make them feel guilty. Add value when you contact them. Add so much value that it doesn't matter if they call you back or not because every time you reach out to them, you're giving them a little bit more value. And eventually they're gonna be like, wow, you know what? I haven't called them back and they've added so much value and they're working so hard for me. I, I need, to, you know what? Before I sign the lease over here, I need to go back and talk with that gal over there. They're gonna end up feeling guilty on their own. Don't make them feel guilty by saying, I haven't heard back from you. Number 14, I can't stand this word, individual. Uh, how many individuals will be living here? Um, do, do you talk to your friends that way? Hey, you're a fantastic individual. Do you talk to your husband? Do you talk to your wife that way? You know, you're, the, you're a great individual. Talk to them the way people talk to people. How many people are going to be living here? You're an awesome person. What kind of person are you? you know, use the word people, person, friends, whatever. Don't use the word individual. It's cold. It's institutional. It makes them feel like you don't care. And chances are, if you're using words like individual in your vocabulary, you, you, you might not care as much as you should. So we can work on that in another video. So let me know if you need help on caring more about your job, I can give you some tips there. Number 15, we're better than blank. Listen, of course you'd say that. You're a salesperson. Oh, we're better. We're better than Shady Acres over there. You sound terrible when you say we are better than them. We've got a better pool. Our units are larger. Our prices are lower. Our parking is better. A confident professional doesn't even bring up the competition. And when the competition is spoken, what I like to coach my people on, hey, I'm sure they're a great property. If they really start hammering you on, well, you know, they've got this and you don't have that, simply follow up with, do you mind if I ask you a question? Why haven't you signed a lease there? Well, because they don't have anything available or because it's $4,700 a month or um, because uh, uh, the property is actually under construction and it's time to be built for a year. Why haven't you signed a lease there? Be confident in your product. Be confident in your offering. And confidence does not mean that you talk smack about your competition. Confidence means you are so invested in your community and you believe 100% in your heart of hearts that this is the right option for your renter and they're gonna figure it out all by themselves. Do not say you are better. Number 16, discount. If I, if I could get you a discount or if I could get you this special, be careful, and I know we like to use the word special, but be careful with words like discount and special because you're going to simultaneously devalue everything that you've built up until this point when you use the word discount. Suddenly, all 
all the value that they've had in their mind, they're like, well, maybe it's not worth that much because they have to give away specials or they have to give away discounts. So, you know, I, I was thinking this place was pretty good, but obviously I'm the only one that thinks that because they've got to discount the price. Eliminate discount completely and be very cautious about how you use the word special. I'm not a fan. Okay, but if you're going to use special and if marketing saying, hey, we're doing these specials, be very careful about when and how you use that word. Number 17, without a doubt, gone from your vocabulary, throw it down, stamp it out, cheaper. We're cheaper than them. We're cheaper than this. A lot of my affordable folks out there, you think that you need to project and you need to sell differently because you're an affordable community. You're, I'm sorry, with all due respect, as your friend in leasing and life, you are absolutely wrong. All of the things that we teach at Leasing University and all of the tips that I'm giving you for free on these videos on the YouTube channel, and by the way, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you get a chance. All of this stuff, not only is it applicable to affordable, it actually works better in the affordable market. Why? Because traditionally, the people that are shopping for affordable apartments do not get treated with the respect that they deserve. And when you use words like cheaper, you are just playing into that stigmata that all this person cares about is a price and their hopes and their dreams and their wants and their needs don't matter because they need an apartment under $450 and we're cheaper over here than we are at the other people. Hey, listen, what's most important to you? Why is that important to you? What do you want to see first? Why do you want to see it first? I know we can find an amazing, amazing apartment for you. We're going to do our best to make the numbers work. Don't be saying, hey, you got to sign a lease over here because we're cheaper. Number 18. We need to check this on your signage as well. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get in trouble with any of the uh, facilities people making them replace signs. The word forbidden. I can't stand that word. You know, swimming is forbidden after 10 p.m. or, you know, you're forbidden from parking one or two cars. All that makes your prospect feel like is they are about to sign a lease at a prison. So don't use words like forbidden. And I know, I get it. I'm with you. I feel your pain. There are certain policies that are constantly being violated at the property. Don't take your frustrations out on your future resident by letting them know what's forbidden, okay? You want to be positive. You want to be optimistic. I'm not saying tell them they can, listen, we, we did, the pool is closed after 10 p.m. is a lot easier way of saying swimming after 10 p.m. is forbidden. Having more than one car in the parking lot is forbidden. Be careful with that word, eliminate it. I want you to go through and look at your signage and see if there's a better way to do the signage. But for sure, if you're gonna leave the sign, for sure be careful about how you talk to your prospects. They're already scared. They're already under a lot of pressure. Which brings me to the last one, number 19. You've gone through the leasing university closing system. You've got them in the leasing office. You're finalizing all the final application, all the final paperwork, not contract. You're doing all the final paperwork. You're getting the paperwork out of the way. Mike, I just need your signature here, here, and here. Or I just need you, I'm gonna slide over this iPad. I just need you to sign, sign here, here, here. You're giving them a con, you're giving them the feeling that they're entering into something that's scary and they're already scared, okay? If you've ever had people bail out, which we've all had, if you've worked in the industry for any amount of time, you've had people bail out in the middle of the application process. It's because they freak out. They're gonna tell you, oh, I forgot about one thing, or I need to measure this, or I need to measure that, or you know what, Poof, I gotta have my, my uh, friend look at the apartment. It's because they're freaking out. Don't use the word sign and signature. I just need your approval right here. I just need your approval here. That's showing them that they're in a position of power. That's making them feel a lot comfortable. It's much easier for me to approve something than it is for me to sign something. Same outcome. They're still going to write their name down. I just need your approval here, here, and here. That's 19 things. We could probably keep the video going a lot longer. I'm going to pass the torch over to you. What did I miss? What are some of the things that leasing consultants say 
that can help prevent them from getting the lease. Please, please comment below. And like I said before, if you work even in the zip code of property management, please subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be feeding you awesome tips that are gonna help make your life easier. And please check us out over at leasinguniversity.com. It's the number one sales training in the world for property managers, for leasing agents, for leasing consultants. Leasinguniversity.com, check it out, and you can always reach my office at 888-735-7451. If you want me to get on a plane and come and train you and your people, I am more than happy. It would be my honor to do so. I've trained thousands of leasing consultants, and every one of them, their job has gotten a lot easier from that training. In fact, hundreds of them have left positive testimonials over at leasinguniversity.com, so you can check that out over there if you're at all unsure of whether or not you wanna have me come out and train your people. On that note, until the next video, my name's Matt Easton. Be great and get those leases. The way people rent apartments has changed. Today's renter has access to more information. Today's renter has more choices. The apartment industry needs you. Studies have shown that moving is the most stressful life event. The old sales training, well, it just doesn't work today. I'd like to teach you how to take the stress out of leasing apartments in a way that's meaningful to you and your renters and get you seven times more leases. I'll show you how the perfect leasing process works. I'm gonna walk you through everything from answering the phone to closing the lease. I'm gonna show you how to determine your prospects' wants and their needs so that you can build value in your apartments. You will learn how to handle any objection or complaint. I'm gonna show you how to connect with your renter so it's easy for them to rent with you. I've taught the best property management companies and thousands of people just like you how to lease apartments. Property management is complicated. I'll simplify it for you. There's more competition than ever before. I'm gonna show you how to be number one. All of a sudden, your career, it's gonna make perfect sense. Even if you've never worked in sales or property management before. And for the advanced property manager, I'm gonna show you how to take things to the next level. Leasing University is a new, simple, step-by-step -step process that's effective. We're gonna help you become a rock star in property management. I'm Matt Easton, and this is Leasing University.